Hi, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about working with displacement maps when rendering using Octane for Cinema 4D. And for our project file, we'll be taking a look at how I created this kind of crystal logo here, this crystal Octane logo, and how I made all these cracks and crevices in the surface that create this kind of sort of interior light bouncing effect uh, using displacement maps. Uh, so I created the models for the scene using ZBrush, but you can use these same techniques if you're using another digital uh, sculpting program such as Mudbox. Uh, the main thing to pay attention to is the settings that I use when I generate the displacement maps because those are designed to work specifically uh, with Octane for Cinema 4D. So let's start by taking a look at the scene in Cinema 4D. So here's the scene in Cinema 4D, and you can see it's pretty simple. Just have a ground plane. Uh, kind of a rocky surface here, and some smaller crystals, and then our main logo object right here. These are all polygon surfaces. The logo object, of course, it has UV texture coordinates. This is what they look like. They're pretty simple. Whenever you're using octane displacement, your object must have uh, UV texture coordinates. And keep in mind, you can only use image textures for displacement. You can't use octanes procedural textures such as marble or turbulence or that kind of thing. So for the lighting in the scene, I have an octane texture environment and it's set to black and it just creates kind of a dark area, it blocks out any default lighting. And then I have two area lights. So I have one area light up here that's shining down from above and then another one down here that's providing some backlighting. I have a dark glossy shader applied to this surface. And then the material on the logo is an octane specular material, and that has the displacement applied to it. And this a very similar material is also applied to these smaller crystals, but there's no displacement on that. So the only displacement that's being used in this scene is on the logo itself. So let's take a look in ZBrush, and I'll show you how I exported the displacement map from that program. So here's what the object looks like in ZBrush 4R7. And you can see I've sculpted uh, scratches and cracks and other details and made the surface somewhat uneven so that it would reflect light in kind of an interesting crystal-like way. If we take a look at the geometry, it has several levels of subdivision. So the lowest subdivision level is only 7,200 points. Uh, but this actually has six levels of subdivision and at the highest level it's uh, 7 million points. So it's got a lot of detail in there. So in the Cinema 4D scene, I'm using the lowest subdivision level version of the logo, the one that has 7,200 points. So the easiest way to generate a displacement map in ZBrush is to use the Multimap Exporter plugin. It's found in the Z plugin palette. So if I open this up, you can see here it is, Multimap Exporter. And I'm just going to go over some of the more important settings. You can see it, it generates all types of different maps but the only one I'm concerned about right now is displacement. So that's the only one I have turned on. I'm going to set my uh, size to 4096. So that means that the displacement map will be 4K or 4096 by 4096. So some of the other important settings to turn on are flip V. This is because ZBrush uh, UV coordinates are flipped vertically versus most other programs. Also recalculate smooth UVs at the highest subdivision level. Now down here in the export options, for the displacement map, so it's in this rollout right here. This is how you determine what type of displacement map you're going to create. If you want to create a 32-bit floating point um, displacement map, then you want to make sure that you have three channels, 32-bit, and EXR turned on. I'm also using adaptive, so this means that it adapts the displacement map based on the detail in the model and smooth UVs. And most importantly is this mid value right here. So with this mid value is set to 0.5, that means that in the displacement map itself, in the texture map, the gray values, the 0.5 values, or if you want to think of it as 50% gray, either way, that means that there's no displacement. So wherever there's gray in the map, the geometry is not going to be changed. Anything that's higher than 0.5 is going to be pushed outwards. The vertices of the model are going to be pushed outwards and anything that's lower than 0.5 is going to be pushed inwards. So that these cracks that are going into the surface, those would be darker or lower than 0.5 or lower than 50% gray. These parts that kind of stick out a little bit, those would be the lighter parts of the model that uh, are higher than 0.5. Now if I set this mid value to zero, 
then that means that negative values, or values that are below black, are going to push the vertices of the model in when it's rendered with octane. And positive values, values that are above zero, are going to push the surface out. And as you can see from this little tool tip here, um, using a mid-value of zero works best when you're rendering 32-bit uh, EXRs. There are advantages and disadvantages to 32-bit EXRs versus 16-bit TIFFs. 32-bit EXRs tend to be more accurate. They have more uh, information contained in the file, so you get more of an accurate displacement. However, they also take up more space, texture space, because it's a bigger file. Um, you might find that a 16-bit uh, TIFF with a mid-value of 0.5 works just fine for your scene. The reason I'm making such a big point of this is that this setting is an important one to keep in mind when you're rendering the displacement map in Octane, because in the Octane displacement node, you also have an opportunity set to set the mid-value. And you want to make sure that the mid-value that you set in Octane matches the mid-value that you use in uh, ZBrush. If you turn off three channels, 32-bit and EXR, then what's going to happen is ZBrush is going to make a 16-bit grayscale displacement map. So that's what I'm going to do for this particular map. I'm going to leave this at 0.5 so that we have 50% gray, and I'm going to turn off three channels, 32-bit and EXR. Um, so once you've chosen your options, you basically press the Create All Maps button, find a location on your hard drive to save the um, file. It'll save it out as a Photoshop file. And uh, I usually open it up in Photoshop and then convert it into a TIFF uh, when I'm rendering it with uh, 3D Studio Max. But um, all you need to do is press Save and it will create the map. So ZBrush takes a few minutes to generate the displacement map, but here is the result in Photoshop. And you can see it's a grayscale map. All the gray color corresponds to the areas on the surface that will not be displaced. These dark lines are the cracks in the surface that push inwards, and the lighter areas are the parts of the surface that push outwards. The advantage of creating a displacement map with a mid value of 0.5 is that you can open it up in Photoshop and actually paint additional details if you wanted to on top of this displacement map. In fact, it's kind of an old school way. You could paint the entire displacement map in Photoshop if you didn't have access to ZBrush. Uh, it just requires getting uh, a screenshot of the UVs so you have a guide so you know exactly how to paint uh, on the surface or where to paint the cracks on the surface. Uh, it's a little bit less intuitive, but it will work. So if we take a look at the mode here, we can see that it is indeed a 16-bit uh, image. So I'm going to save this out as a TIFF. And this TIFF is what we'll be using for our displacement map within Cinema 4D. So here is the geometry in the Cinema 4D scene. Uh, and you can see it's being displaced by that uh, texture map that I exported from ZBrush. So I want to go over how you set up the displacement using uh, Octane for Cinema 4D. And I'm actually going to apply a new glossy material to the surface just to make it easier to see what's going on. So here is the Octane node editor. And this is a graph of the material that's currently applied to the logo. And it's pretty simple. It's really just uh, a few textures applied to a specular material. And of course, we have our displacement. Let's move this out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to create an Octane material. Drag it over here and select it. And let's set the material type to glossy. And I'm going to go into the diffuse section and lower the diffuse so it's a little bit grayer, darker. And I'm going to uh, go into roughness and let's raise the roughness a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to select the logo here. Right click over the material and choose apply. So now it's applied to that surface. So when you apply a displacement texture to a surface, you want to make sure that the surface itself has enough geometry to support the detail in that displacement map. Because the displacement map is literally pushing the vertices of the surface in and out based on the colors of the texture. So uh, in order to do this, we want to make sure that we uh, have a subdivision level set for our surface. So I'm going to select the object and go under C4D Octane Tags and take a look at my object tag here. And I want to take a look under Subdivision Group. This subdivision level here is uh, how you actually subdivide the surface when working with Octane. So I'm going to set this to 2, so it has plenty of geometry. So now let's go into the Octane Live Viewer 
and do a quick render and see how that looks. So you can see it's lumpy because this is based on that uh, lowest level of subdivision I exported from ZBrush, which had kind of low level damage to it, but we're not seeing any of the cracks yet that we would expect to see with the displacement map. And the other things are light in the background. It's way too bright. So let's, uh, let's turn that down a little bit and set the power down to 10 for now. So I'm going to close this for a second and let's go back into the node editor and hook up our displacement map. So I'm going to select the material and go to displacement and click on add displacement. And this adds our displacement node. So this node is the one where we set how the surface is going to be displaced by the texture. But of course, now we need to actually hook up the texture. So in the displacement node attributes, I'll click on this button here to load a texture. And I'm going to load my Octane logo displacement map that I exported from ZBrush. And so there we, there we have it hooked into displacement. So now I'll select the displacement node. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that my mid-level matches the setting that I set in ZBrush. And that was 0.5. So let's set that to 0.5. And if you forget, you can just take a look at your texture map. If you see it's mostly gray, then chances are you want to set this to 0.5. If it looks completely black, then it's probably a 32-bit EXR with a mid-level of 0. And you want to make sure you set this to 0. So then we also want to set the level of detail. This should match the resolution of our texture map, which is 4K, so 4096 by 4096. And then the amount is how far it's going to actually displace the surface. So this will probably uh, require some tweaking. So let's bring up our live viewer window and do another render and see if we can set that uh, height level properly. So you can see now it's making a big difference. We definitely see uh, some damage there on the surface from these cracks. It's a little bit too much. You can see that it's kind of getting distorted. What I usually do is uh, I'll set this to, well, let's zoom in a little bit, first of all, and then we can sort of see if the uh, surface is getting warped a little bit too much. And you can see we've got bits sticking out right here, so that's no good. So let's uh, bring this down to one centimeter. And you can see that's a little bit too faint. Now we're losing a little bit too much of the detail that we want. So it's just a matter of kind of dialing it in and finding that uh, sweet spot where it looks the way that you want it to. So we have some cracks going, but it's looking a bit on the puffy side. Uh, it's not quite looking like crystal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object, go to the Octane object tag, and under subdivision group, let's set the subdivision sharpness. Let's set it to 10, which I think is as high as it will go. And we should see something that looks a little bit, a little bit more sharper edges. I think that looks better. So a couple limitations that you should be aware of when working with displacement maps. Uh, for one thing, you can't use a displacement map and a normal map in the same material. So in other words, if I had a normal map that contained some fine detail on the surface here, you can't plug it directly into the same material that's being displaced. Instead, what you have to do is create a mix material, apply the displacement to the mix material, and then on the input materials for that mix material, then you can use a normal map on those materials, and that'll allow you to get the best of both worlds. You can only use image textures for displacement. You can't use procedural textures such as turbulence or noise. So I'm using the PMC kernel when rendering the scene, and you can see the refraction is very nice. Got some light bouncing around on the inside of the surface. And of course, you can tweak the shader a little bit to get uh, different qualities of the crystals or even make it a bit more complex by adding things like a medium and that kind of stuff. At the moment, it is a very simple specular shader. And I've got my displacement map. I have a mixed texture going into the roughness setting, and it's using a dirt texture to blend two very low value float textures, 0 and 0, 0 0.1. And if I raise this a little bit to say 0.01, we're going to see something that looks a little bit more like uh, frosted glass with that blurred refraction. Uh, the dirt texture that is blending those two values kind of helps to add a little bit more detail. But it's a pretty simple shader overall. And if you'd like to take a closer look at it, you can download the project files and open them up in Cinema 4D.
and see what you can do to uh, maybe improve upon the shader and make it even more complex and realistic.